Hello, Blake Rudis here. Today I wanna to talk about Photoshop Unplugged. Now, I get a lot of questions from people saying, you know, I would love to just dive full into Photoshop, but I can't because I have this plugin that does this. I have this plugin that does this and this plugin that does this. And then I make my way into Photoshop to only do this and this. Well, the thing is, a lot of the things that are in plugins are in Photoshop. They're just a little bit hidden, and you kind of have to know some of the tricks of the trade in order to do it. But you'll realize that if you're doing it in Photoshop, and you have those as layers, you have a lot more control over your image than you would if you were in a plugin in the first place. So in this second bonus video for the Zone System Express course, I want to stress the importance of getting to know Photoshop as well as you know your plugins. Because here's the deal. If you know Photoshop really well, you'll know every plugin on the market because a lot of those plugins use the same concepts that are built right into Photoshop. But the thing is, Photoshop is the most powerful photo editing program on the planet, period, okay? I've been using Photoshop for over 17 years now, and I still teach myself new stuff. So let's jump into this. Everything that you see here is downloadable. The actions that we're using are gonna be downloadable as well as this video, so you can reference it whenever you want and put it right into the Zone System Express course when it is released. So let's jump into Photoshop so we can start using this like a plugin. So when we talk about using Photoshop as a plugin, we need to talk about the things that people typically use plugins for. And those things are tone, color, artistic effects, you see a pattern here? Tone, color, just, I'm just, just saying, okay? So the first thing we need to do is just assess what you can do in Photoshop to do these things in terms of tone, color, and effects, okay? So tone is gonna be the first one. If you're in Photoshop CC, you can use Adobe Camera Raw as a filter at any time. So what I would suggest is pressing Command or Control J on your background layer that you're going to do this on, and you press Control Shift A or Command Shift A on a Mac. And that'll bring you right into Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. And the reason why I say that, you, you would think, well, isn't Adobe Camera Raw a plugin? No. Adobe Camera Raw is a part of Photoshop, so it can be used in Photoshop in your layers palette, just like you see here. So we have our highlights, our shadows, our whites, blacks, contrast, and exposure, which are all tone-related items right here in Photoshop. I'm going to show you another little trick after I'm done doing this, though. So let's just uh, add some depth to this image. There's no depth in this image, so it looks really flat. So we're going to add some depth. So what we need to do is just maybe uh, boost up our highlights a little bit, maybe drop our shadows down a little bit, maybe even increase this contrast up a little bit. We'll take a look at our whites and just boost these whites around, maybe amplify those whites a little bit and bring them up to, to create some depth, and then drop some shadows a little bit. So if we look at the before and after, all I'm doing is enhancing the tones in here, okay? I'm assessing the tone that's in the image and using tone to create a sense of depth in the image to carry me from the front of the image to the back of the image instead of it being flat, looking like it was taken out of a helicopter window, which it wasn't taken out of a helicopter window, but I was focused about 300 millimeters out into the wild, if you want to call it that, in Yosemite, looking at some of the peaks on top of the mountains and stuff. So. When you have that kind of distance between you and the subject matter, things get foggy. You have to amplify that tone a little bit. And that's all we did here. We just boosted some of that contrast, boosted some of that tone. If we wanted to, we can even come in here and, and, and adjust the exposure a little bit to bring out the background a little bit. I kind of like the background being faded because it's not my focal point. This part is. If I wanted that background to come out, I would do that. But I'm just using Adobe Camera Raw as a tone enhancer. You can also come in here and drop your saturation all the way down, and you can start to use Adobe Camera Raw as a black and white processor, okay? Very cool stuff that you can do right here inside Adobe Camera Raw. I'm going to go ahead and press OK because this is Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. It applied all of those settings on top of the background layer, all right, because we made it on a new layer. That gives us the ability to do things that plugins wouldn't allow us to do with tone because the most powerful things in Photoshop are going to be your blend modes, your opacity, blend if, and all the things you can do to a layer that you can't do in a plugin. And one of the things I can use is a blend mode. So if I go down here and select luminosity, what that allows me to do, if we zoom in here, it allows us to apply what we just did only to the tones and not make any adjustment to the colors. Because sometimes when you do tone adjustments, colors get moved with them. So a benefit of doing your tone adjustments in something like Adobe Camera Raw as a filter in Photoshop is that you get access to luminosity, you get access to opacity, and you even get access to things like blend if. So let's go ahead and move into color. 
Another area that people use plugins for is color adjustments. And in Photoshop, you have a lot of access to uh, adjustment layers for color. If we go down to our adjustment layers, all of these right here are all color related adjustment layers. Okay. With your most popular, probably being the hue saturation adjustment layer. So I don't need to jump into a program or a plugin to adjust my hue saturation and lightness. I can do it all right here in Photoshop and it's much more powerful because right here I can click on this, which is called your targeted adjustment tool. When I click on that, I can select maybe this color and that says, okay, we just went from the master. If you notice that we just went from the master setting to the yellows, which now says anything we do to this HSL adjustment here is specifically for yellows. So I'm going to bump up my saturation a little bit, maybe even add a little bit of green to that yellow to make all my yellows just kind of pop a little bit more with that green look instead of the, the staunch kind of bland yellow. I can remain on that targeted adjustment tool and click on maybe my blues. Maybe I want to bump up the saturation of my color blue a little bit. I said a little bit, not a lot, and then maybe change that hue to maybe a more deeper blue instead of the cyanish blue that we have there. Okay. Then I can maybe look at my color red and move the adjustment of my color red. This is really powerful because this is kind of like selective color, not the selective color that you're used to where you change a black and white image over and then you mask out some of the color. We're selectively boosting the saturation and the hue of certain colors to make them stand out over other colors. Okay. And you can adjust that hue for that color red. If you want to give me a deeper red, almost into your magentas or a red that's almost into your yellows, we'll just keep it right about there. And now there's the before and the after really quick adjustment just to pump up the color in our image. There's other color adjustments here too. You could go into something like the color balance and with color balance, you can change the midtones, shadows, or highlights and look at the colors within them and say, okay, we want the midtones to be maybe a little bit more cyan there, maybe a little bit more on the green side there, and maybe add a little bit of yellow to those midtones too. And now look at the difference. So here we have complete control over the adjustment of our color in our images, but it doesn't stop there because what do we have access to? We have access to our blend modes. I can change this to color. The color blend mode is amazing because what the color blend mode does is it says, okay, I want you to apply the colors of this hue saturation adjustment layer to the image, but protect all of the images underlying tones so that the tones shine through the colors. Okay. So in the last one, we change it to luminosity to protect the color on the image. Now we're protecting the tones on the image by using that color blend mode. So typically the way I think about it, if I'm using color on my photograph, I can change the blend mode to color to only modify color. If I'm adjusting tone on my image, I can change the blend mode to luminosity to only affect the tone in my image. Okay. Quite a few things in here that you can use to adjust color. Again, you can even use Adobe camera raw as a filter to adjust color, but let's go ahead and jump into the next one, which is artistic effects. So when we talk about artistic effects, there's a lot of things we can do in artistic effects in Photoshop, plenty of artistic effects in Photoshop. Now in this image, this is an image that's already been processed, but I think it could use a little bit of more of something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some color grading to it and add what I call radiance to it. Okay. So the first one is a color grade. Well, how do we color grade an image and what is color grading? Why do, why do you even want to do it? Color grading is a way to pull all the colors in your image together and make it have an overall tone to it. You ever go out at sunset and you see that, uh, your greens on the grass have now changed to a slight orangish color because the sunset is so gorgeous. The, the light is radiating on it. That's the sun color grading normal colors that you see outside and you can do it in Photoshop. And what we can do is we can, we can create two different types of color grades. The first one is a gradient map. We click gradient map and that applies any gradient we use to the tones in our image saying all of your blacks are now brown. All of your whites are now tan. We can press okay on that but we get access to many things. This just looks like a sepia tone image. If we change this to color, like we said in the last one, it now applies the colors to our image and protects the tones that are underneath. And here we can drop the opacity to something like maybe 20%. We can also change this to something like soft light to bring out a little bit more drama in those colors as well. The choice is up to you, but here we can change that gradient to anything we want now any gradient we want to give the mood of this image, the mood that we want the viewer to feel when they see it. Another form of color grading is to go into the HSL adjustment layer with, like we looked at last time and click this button called colorize. 
color eyes will allow you to pick any color right here from the hue and make your whole image that color. So what we can do is maybe just bump this up a little bit and then we can maybe bump up the saturation a little bit, change this to color and drop the opacity down. And that's a great way to color grade. One of the benefits of this way of color grading is that we can come back here to the hue saturation and luminance at any time and just move this back and forth and get a lot more liberty to adjust the color in our image than say something like a gradient map, which might be a little bit more time consuming. And there's actions for these too. I made actions for these. So all you have to do is open up the action for this one and click on the HSL color grade. And now you have a hue saturation luminance color grade. And this is a gra gradient color grade that you can click on and automatically have that. The next one we want to talk about is radiance. So I'll press command or control J to give this image an overall radiating glow. And I'm going to change this to something like soft light. Soft light's great because anything that's neutral gray will stay the same. Anything that's beyond neutral gray will make things a little bit brighter or a little bit darker, depending on whether it's on the white side or the, the black side of the spectrum. Okay. So when we change this to soft light, we immediately get more contrast in our image. But now I'm going to go up to filter. I'm going to go up to blur and I'm going to go to Gaussian blur. And when we blur this, you can see that when we blur this to something like 30 pixels, the whole image just kind of gets this glowing kind of feel to it, but it's a little too much. So what we need to do is open this up and go into the blend if settings and say, okay, blend if I like this overall glow, but I don't want you to affect my highlights underneath, move this over. So our highlights underneath don't get affected, press alt or option to split it and feather it. And now our highlights are not being affected by that glow. Same thing with our darks. We can say, okay, I really don't want my shadows to be that radiating glow. So I'll move this over to protect those shadows, alt or option to split and feather that. And now that glow is not affecting our shadows quite as much, but is giving all of our midtones a nice radiated glow that has our highlights and shadows protected. Again, there's an action for this. So you go in here and you click radiance and press play. And now you're going to get the exact same thing that we just did right here in Photoshop in this tutorial. Let's go ahead and move into the last one, which is really cool. It's about sharpening focus. So some plugins, offer the ability to sharpen focus. And I've always been dumbfounded by how they do it until I figured out in Photoshop and now I don't use plugins for it anymore. So what you're looking at is an image that was taken again from a 300 millimeter lens uh, out in Yosemite at the top of half dome. So I'm looking at the top of half dome. And when there's a lot of distance between you and the subject like that, things get fuzzy. It might not even deal with the quality of the lens that you're, that you're using. It might just deal with the fact that there's a lot of atmosphere between you and that subject. So when you try to zoom into it, it still looks a little hazy. Well, we can, we can get that back. And you might be thinking, what are you talking about? It doesn't look that bad, Blake. Well, check this out. If I press command or control J to duplicate that background layer, and I'm going to change this to uh, linear light. Okay. And the reason why I'm changing this to linear light is because linear light works a lot faster and a lot harder and a lot sharper than something like soft light. And then I'll go up to filter, go to other and go to high pass. So now if I zoom in here into this background area, while I do this, you can see the preview. You can watch how I actually get really really sharp until the point like this is a little too much obviously but if we just keep this really low at about 0.8 pixels nothing really higher than that it's so very very low okay press okay now look at the before now look at the after let's zoom into those rocks a little bit look at the before look at the after now if we if we want a little bit more we can press command or control j duplicate that now we're sharpening up that focus a little bit more so when we zoom out this thing, no matter where you look at this rock is tack sharp. Now I do want to give you a word of caution on this. If you're using an image that has a lot of noise in your shadows, you're going to want to protect those areas. So let's do this. Let's double click right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a color overlay and that color overlay. Let's just make it this red color. And, and then we're going to go up here to the blending options. And this is a really cool way that you can see what your blend if is doing. So we'll move this over. I actually just found this out the other day. There was a, uh, a guy on YouTube that saw one of my videos about using a clipping mask in the image. And he said, you know, it would probably be a little bit easier for you to color overlay. And he's right. So when you move this over to the right, you're starting to see all the areas that are being protected from this sharpen. Okay. And when you split and feather it, you can see how that feathering is working. So this area is all these black areas are not going to be affected by the sharpening. If we move this over. Now all of our highlights are not going to be affected by that sharpening. 
our highlights are being protected and our shadows are being protected. So the only thing that's really getting this adjustment right now is the midtones. And if you don't want that effect on there, just click the preview on that effect. And now you can see right here, we turn the eyeball on and off. And now that's only affecting our highlights and our shadows. So if that just went right over your head, don't worry about it. I went ahead and made an action for it that you can download with this. If you press play on the sharpening focus, it's going to give you that sharpened focus exactly like I just made it here. And it's going to give you an effect eyeball here that you can turn on and off to see what's being affected. And all of it is already done for you. If we zoom in one click and you've got tack sharp images now in Photoshop without using any plugins. Do I still use plugins? Yes, I do enjoy plugins. However, my goal here is to get you to look at Photoshop and stay in Photoshop so that your workflow isn't going from this plugin to this plugin to this plugin to this plugin. I only go from Photoshop into one plugin and that's about it. I don't tend to bounce all over the place. That's even if I use plugins in my workflow, but typically everything's done right here in Photoshop. And in the next video, I'm going to show you exactly what I use now. The new zone system that's been created to really speed up my workflow keep me in Photoshop and have me making masterpieces literally in minutes. Seven minutes is my time now to make an image from blah to badass. So stay tuned because the next video is coming up. In the meantime, download this, put it in a folder so that when the new course does come out, you can put your bonus content right in with the new course. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this and grow your photographic pursuits.